Alrighty, so, uh, so please welcome, you already know him, Philip Hodgetts. Thank you. I've been chasing a couple of specific goals in this field for about 10 or 11 years now, and there's two things that I've learned about machine learning artificial intelligence in that time. It's one, that it, will, it has delighted me, that it has done things that I never imagined that it would be possible to do. And the other is that it has incredibly disappointed me because it has not done the things that I wanted it to do. <laughs> uh, about 10 years ago when I was introducing um, Lumberjack system to the world and t saying about real-time keywording being the best way to log until if we get artificial intelligence to do it for us. And I said at the time, that should be about five years away. So based on my proven track predictive record, you should not pay any attention to me tonight at all. <laughs> because 10 years later, I am still waiting for that elusive keyword generation from, um, from uh, by artificial intelligence. We're getting closer to that with, with uh, large language models, chat GPT, et cetera. And I've come to the conclusion that was entirely the wrong approach anyway. So that saying, in the visual field, that we have seen amazing things happen. Um, the world of visual imagery has just exploded with machine learning. Um, you've heard about mid-journey, stable diffusion, chat GPT, and the rest of these AI generative tools. And Michael is going to give you a much more in-depth look at those tools. My goal is to give you a, like a 30,000 foot overview of everything that's going on. I made my most recent update to this presentation at two o'clock on um, May 24th, 2023. By tomorrow, it's probably going to be out of date again. I'm sorry. Uh, Excuse me, can you put the mic closer to you? I certainly can. Thank you. Um, the, um, that's, um, I, I believe that the most positive way of looking at this is that we're going to become centaurs. Those that learn how to, <laughs> the, yeah, half man, half beast. I mean, the beast in this case, will be artificial intelligence. And, and I'm, I, I presume most people will know by this point that when we say artificial intelligence, what we really machine, mean is some form of machine learning. We are not yet at any, clo any point close to artificial general intelligence and nothing is sentient. And, but people who work with these tools will have expanded creative um, power and will become much more efficient as the drudgery goes away taken over by machines. One of the good ways of looking at this um, is that back in the day, I can remember when every grandmaster could beat the best computers in the world at chess. There was no chance that a computer was ever going to beat a grandmaster at chess until it did. Thank you to Deep Blue. Um, and then consistently uh, from that point on, the computers consistently beat the best chess, player, beat the best chess players in the world. Do you know what beats the, the best chess machines in the world? A chess machine and a grandmaster chess player. The combination of human and machine is way more powerful than the, the machine alone. So um, the, the combination, the machine brings all of the things that it brings, its speed of, knowledge, of, speed of recalling information, its of consideration of thousands of moves. But the one thing that the human brings is that intuition, that little spark of, of, of total, the original creativity. Um, and together, as a team, we're going to see the real benefit from this. Two other examples, a, a professor required their students to use AI in his classes, and Tom Scott did this rather interesting story um, about trying to write code with ChatGPT for a very obscure Google language. Both of these, examples show that the best way to work with, with um, ChatGPT and other large language models is interactively, like you were coaching a writer. You were the editor and you were suggesting improvements to the writing of the writer. That's, um, so I know for, if you do want to look at that, um, Tom Scott's Everything is About to Change, that's one of the places where you can get a little scary because he's arguing in there that we most likely are at the Napster point, the inflection point where the internet took off and started to become something that was integrated into non-geeky, non-nerd lives. 
And we're at that point, if we're at that point now, I'm not going to say the best is yet to come, but the most is yet to come. <laughs> Machine learning is already everywhere and has been for quite some time. It's been a couple of years now that Netflix and probably other studios have been running all potential scripts through a, an AI, a machine learning model, that looks at the characters, the plot lines, the, the uh, cast associated with it, and gives it a rating as to how successful it's likely to be. Um, they claim that the human will always make the final decision, but will you go against the machine? Um, Associated Press and a lot of other uh, news outlets have been using AI to write their basic stories. Any sports reports, any local, co local um, council reports, um, and many other things are now written by automatically by machines just because they've got the data, the raw data coming in, and these are very formulaic and very easy for a machine to create. It does concern me as to how people are going to get into journalism when all of those entry jobs used to be writing those stories about the sports reports and so on. How do you find, how do entry level jobs actually find their way forward when machine learning is, is giving coaching to those entry level jobs in many cases to allow them to, form, to perform at the best of anyone in the organisation? Film and television is already affected by these tools. You know, upscaling, we no longer have to be scared of low resolution footage. And what a boon for documentary filmmakers. I mean, no archive footage is now going to be in terribly low resolution quality. It can be recreated at 4K if we want. Ditto, um, frame rate conversion, colorization, these things are already happening. Imagine a world with automatic rotoscoping. What will change if instead of being t tediously outlining um, an object to simply separate it from its background, if it's only three clicks, we'll take, you, take it out from its background and maybe a little refining required. Imagine how much, how, what will change then. We have plausible digital avatars. I showed you a shot of metahumans um, earlier in the, the piece. We have corporate avatars that are now plausibly good enough for education and training purposes. We have synthetic voiceovers and um, it leads me to say that if your work, your career revolves around doing a lot of talking head videos, either shooting them or editing them for corporations or for education purposes, it might be time to reassess your career. I'll come back to that. Now, Val Kimmel, Kilmer starred in um, Top Gun Mavericks, but he didn't speak a single word of the script, of the script because he lost his voice um, to can throat cancer many years ago. But, but I was struck by throat cancer. After getting treated, my voice as I knew it was taken away from me. Artificial voices aren't just good enough. They're good enough for major motion pictures. That is a completely synthetic voice based on his original voice. Fortunately, there was a lot of material sampled. But even in iOS 17, 15 minutes of training will give your voice to your iOS um, voiceover tools. Machines write music. Avia has been doing music, artificial music, uh, for quite some time. These are very high quality backing tracks for um, all, all sorts of purposes. It was really interesting watching Avia's predecessor over a two year period develop itself from writing very poor um, 80s video game style music, MIDI stuff, to writing quite reasonable um, backing tracks that you'd use on a late night pharmaceutical commercial for sure. <laughs> it's even got better since then. Uh, Sound Raw will take custom tr make custom tracks for you in about a second a track. You tell it the, the, the emotion, the music style that you want, you give it some clue about the duration and the instruments that you want, and it will immediately give you 15 tracks in about 15 seconds, all of them completely original and never before heard. You can then align that to video, you can change the instrumentation, you can make a lot of editing. It's very similar to um, Smart Sound, if you're familiar with that, but where every track is an original uh, is an original piece of music. Google's Music ML, which has come out of the shadows this last uh, couple of weeks and was one of the revisions to this presentation, um, 
text-prompted video, text-prompted music in the same way that Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion do text-prompted images and um, Runway ML do text-prompted animations. These are text-prompted pieces of music based simply on your description of your want. I want scary music with an overtone of violins and a harsh stab towards the end. And that's what it will write for you based on, on your description. And also in the music field, and I'm sure going to, going to create a lot more work for um, um, music industry attorneys, <laughs> um, it, uh, these, these um, recreation of major artists' voices. Uh, check out the, um, the, uh, the AI Oasis album, and you can, um, or also Heart on My Sleeve, which is a, a fully fake version of uh, Drake and The Weeknd. Um, the the um, QR codes will take you directly to those examples. Um, machine Sing, there is actually an artificial intelligence uh, singer enrolled in a prestigious Chinese university right now. Um, and I presume you've seen all sorts of examples of Midjourney and, and Dali doing image creativity. Machines write stories, write code, build websites and plain language descriptions. And if you read the description, that I, the piece of um, example from ChatGPT that I just put up there, you can see that it has particular um, application in, in corporate communication, particularly communicating about notes with producers and networks. <laughs> and of course the adult industry is having a field day with AI chatbots and toys. <laughs> Something interesting happens when we apply these AI technologies. We um, introduced free transcription, unlimited free transcription into Lumberjack Builder, our text-based ed video editor, um, back in December last year. And, um, and something really significant happened. And it, it worried me a little. And you're going to see a really good example of text-based editing, video editing in Premiere later tonight. And I, I get to say that it's a... It's a good example because uh, Greg and I actually invented text-based editing in 2010. Uh, worked with Premiere 5 and it worked with Final Cut Pro 7. Now something happened the year after that and Predator never really reached its potential. What was it? Oh, they killed Final Cut, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing that I realised that is that um, I had always been taught that you can have fast, good, or cheap, and you can have any two. You could never have all three, except the accuracy of these AI transcriptions is beyond human accuracy, and by beyond human accuracy, I mean my accuracy, because it, more ac it accurately transcribed a passage that I had never heard clearly before. Um, it is fast, I mean, in Builder, it is fast on Apple Silicon, and it is free, so it breaks that paradigm. It doesn't matter if it's in Builder, Premiere Pro, Resolve, or some other tool. Transcription is high quality, transcription is now free, and it breaks that paradigm that has fundamentally underpinned my entire career. Other stuff like that is going to happen. And this is where it gets really interesting, is these tools come into our, into our, um, into our computers and allow us to work with them uh, what happens when rotoscaping images is, is free? And that quick. That's runway, runway ML. If I, were go, if I were to do a little personal music video, which I do from time to time, uh, I would never have the patience to actually rotoscope myself out to add like a glow around me or something, some fancy effect. But if, if all it revolve, involves is a couple of clicks on the object and it is automatically selected out from that object, suddenly hundreds of people are freed from working in drudgery conditions in low-wage countries and being replaced by a couple of computers in a cloud somewhere. Um, and I'm sure um, Carl is going to sh show you a better example of outpainting than this one. Um, he's hopefully going to use that Venice example, Carl. Um, but outpainting means that we can use smaller sets and fill in the rest without having to do plates or without having to do expensive keying. Um, 
So what happens? When, how does that change production when small sets can be outpainted into big sets, where small studios can be made to look as if they were the biggest set in the world? What changes in the way we approach production? What changes when a custom illustration is as simple as describing it? Um, um, although, if you're using some of the tools, you should watch the hands, because you know, stable diffusion still hasn't quite got the hands right. <laughs> Uh, unless you're doing a horror movie, then it's perfect. <laughs> uh, Mid Journey, I believe, has really got has learned that, that fingers have hands have five fingers, and it's got it pretty good. Uh, not entirely um, AI, but it increasingly is being AI driven. Is um, Nvidia's Meta Humans? Mostly, they are driven by human performance at the moment, but. Um, already AI is coming in with um, assisting performances, so basic performances don't have to be modelled by a human first, I'm using motion capture. And if you're interested in that field, um, look up digital and anti-circus. Now, this is a sort of technology that would allow Michael Horton, for example, to, pay, to once again play Kerry Malone, the character he played in his 20s, in the digital Columbo reprise. Yeah, because it would be your, your, now, your modern performance, but you would be modelled as you were in, in the 20s. In, yeah, the, de the development of plausibly believable AV avatars for corporate and educational communications has opened up a whole new area of video, production, video making business that never existed before. And um, we are a client of Synthesia. Um, I, use Synthi I use this character for my, my lumberjack training videos instead of putting myself on camera. And I do that for one, one important reason, well, two important reasons. One, he's a lot better looking than I am, and I'd rather look at him on the screen when I'm editing. And two, I don't have to get out the camera, I don't have to set up some lights, I don't have to set up the audio gear, I don't have to hope that my neighbours are not going to do any construction or weed whacking today. And, and I'm, I'm really going to hope that I don't change the script tomorrow and want to add something to it, because I've got to go through all that again and uh, even though it's my, it's my own like one person version of this, it's still a big hassle compared with pasting my text into a browser, previewing it for pacing and uh, make sure the intonations and the pronunciations are correct, and then simply t five or ten minutes later, I have a fully generated HD video. Um, and this is an example of what Jack is like. Uh, you know, these are model from real people, but they are the AI to creates the speech and performance. You will notice that I have to totally gratuitously, you can see if you look closely in the, into the, in the text there, there are little uh, icons of um, smiley faces and, and raised eyebrows. I've um, included a purely gratuitous eyebrow raise and head nod just to show you what can be done. According to the company, Synthesia is being used by 6,000 corporations for social media, corporate, and educational presentations. If you're involved in the production of talking head video, now might be the time to pivot. Um, if, you need, if you need a digital CEO because their time is precious, they can, they can be created with an hour in the studio, and then you can put whatever words you want into that guy's or lady's mouth. Frightening. Mm. Oh, and by the way, Synthesia is um, only $30 a month for 10 minutes of video. Runway ML first crossed my, caught my eye when I, I saw their, their uh, one-click or two-click um, rotoscoping tool that we saw earlier. They are now doing text to video in two generations. Uh, and you can see the quality improves over time. This did not exist seven months ago. The first generation was uh, of text to video did not exist six months ago, and we're getting into the second generation now. All in a browser. Everything that I've shown is done in a browser. These are generated just simply by text prompts. And you'll notice how, much, how the dates are getting closer and closer together, and how the quality keeps improving. This is a seven-month-old technology. Right now, it's a quite decent storyboarding tool. Um, you can clearly see the difference between generation one and generation two. A storyboarding tool now 
And in eight, six months more, 12 months more, two years more. Two years, I foresee this as being a, capable of generating photorealistic short animations that we can, gen, we can tie together into, into more complex programming. And if we want to see where we are right now, and those of you who know this, this is laughable, so I encourage you to laugh. <laughs> you will anyway. But the important thing to note is this is the current state of where, where tools that did not exist seven months ago. The script was written by ChatGPT. Some of the images are by Midjourney. The video clips come from Runway Gen 2, which is currently only in beta, but um, Gen 1 is available for every Runway customer. The voiceover is from Eleven Labs, and the music is from SoundRaw that I pointed out earlier. And you're doing all that in a browser. Are you ready for best pizza of life? Bring friends down to Pepperoni Hug Spot. Our chefs make pizza with heart and special touch. Cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, and more secret things. Need delivery? Pizzas come fast. Knock knock, who's there? Pizza magic. Eat pepperoni hug spot pizza. Your tummy say thank you, your mouth say, mmm. -hmm. Pepperoni hug spot. It's like family, but with more cheese. <laughs> Credit to Pizza Later for, for that spot. And if you want to if you want to find their channel on on uh, YouTube, there are other examples there already. There's a quite fun beer commercial as well. That's where we are right now. But as I said, these technologies did not exist seven months ago, and they have iterated extremely quickly in that time. Don't think about where we are today. Think about where this is going to be in six months, in 12 months, and two years from now. The rate of change is going to increase. The quality is going to increase. The temporal fidelity, so they don't flicker as much, is going to improve. Think about where you are going to have, what you're going to have to deal with in two years' time, not what you're dealing with now, which reasonably is quite laughable. But it won't be laughable in a year's time. When I wrote my big deep dive into artificial intelligence back in 2021, I hypothesised that, that there was some research that suggested that the day would come where we'd be able to automatically translate um, a TV show or a movie, um, sample the voice of the original actor, revoice it in a new language, and morph the mouth of the actors to, to um, deal with that so that we, it seems like a natural performance in a, in a language not of English. You know, I'm happy to consider that so that I can watch Drag Race Belgique and not have to read subtitles, but I'm a little more concerned at doing that with some of the, the you know, filmic works of art that we also have to deal with. But flawless AI firm Flawless are already in negotiations uh, to license foreign language films for the UK and American markets for the English language markets. So it's already a business opportunity that has been created. With all of these transitions, with all of these opportunities, as we saw with the, the analog to digital transition, it opened up opportunities for hundreds and thousands more people and hundreds of thousands more people to create and tell their stories than ever there were before in the old gatekeeper system. And you know, the price, the price um, of things were just so outrageous back in the day. Trust me, I paid it. <laughs> um, opportunities will change. You know, opportunities in rotoscoping and, and you know, shooting corporate videos, these are going to change when new and interesting more tools become available, more interesting tools become available. But the core of storytelling, particularly narrative, is not going to change. Whether you, whether you direct um, synthetic actors in, in runway ML or in other environment, whether you create your video from short animations there, whether you go old school and shoot it yourself, that was supposed to be a joke, people. <laughs> the thought of, being, of shooting it yourself being old school. So. so the core of that storytelling is not going to change. You still have to sell compelling stories that bring people in. But jobs will change. Not many jobs will completely disappear, but jobs will morph, um, and routine parts of those jobs will, be, will disappear. I can easily see a day when, uh, when an AI will organise all of the, the th 
themes that are in a documentary, in all of the interviews that make up a documentary, and organise those themes and say, and put together some basic string outs for each theme for you to peruse and start building on, because that is not editing a documentary. That's starting to organise your material to edit a documentary. In the same way that you were talking about um, visual search earlier, this, these things are, are going to make it so much easier to find our tools. What do we need to change to make it to survive? Well, there's a very good article over at Forbes.com Forbes um, that the, that the um, QR code will take you to um, that talks about, you know, it's, it's got a very uh, clickbaity headline that says, the chat GPT is the best uh, um, copywriter that I've ever employed, which the article doesn't actually really support um, because the, the, the thing that the human brings, as we found with the chess, the thing that the human brings is that spark of, of originality, that spark of insight that sees something happen, that spark that says hanky-panky um, um, and 16 going on 17 performed by the same artist on consecutive days actually intercut beautifully together. I don't expect any AI to ever see that and do that. Um, AI will never do something truly creative because it is largely derivative. It is based on the works that have gone before it. In the same way that every art student paints, repaints the grand masters to learn their style, in the same way that Cinco Paul, uh, Cinco Paul sampled by playing through all of the, the um, scores of the great 50s musicals before he created Schmigadoon and subsequently the, the later era for Schmicago. Sampling has always been part of the ongoing development of creativity. And I am so very, very pleased that Hollywood has the moral high ground and has never done any derivative works at all. <laughs> AI will not, people will like to work with people and AI will never replace that. So be remarkable, be specialised, do something that stands out from the crowd and always shower and clean your teeth. And learn, learn to use the tools. Go out and practice. Go out and get a, a personal account at Runway ML. See what you can play with. See what you can do. You know, $30 a month will get you 10 minutes of video at Synthesia.io. Um, see what you can play. I mean, anyone remember Red versus, Red versus Blue from the early part of this century where somebody created, uh, used game characters to create narrative storylines? There will be people that, that use these tools in new and interestingly creative ways. The pace of change is going to be faster and faster. And if you don't constantly learn and adapt and, and utilise, you will probably find yourself falling behind. Um, learn to love our new robot overlords. <laughs> and I occasionally write about this stuff on my blog, and, but the person you should definitely be following is Jeff Foster. Jeff writes over at um, Pro Video Coalition, and he has an updated list, a list that he constantly updates of all the current AI tools that are available for us to use. And I am finished ahead of time, Michael. Two minutes. Two minutes.